You're listening to the Hope Revealed Podcast Network with your host, Matt Crump. The Hope Revealed Podcast Network is home to shows like Hope Revealed, God's Got This Stories, Fight School with co-host and Emmy Award winning director, Bill Nolan, on Clubhouse, the new international room called Let's Get Naked and Cancer FU, Fighters United, or his LinkedIn show called Matt Chat Live. Every episode of every show is designed to give you inspiration, motivation, hope, and the tools you need to navigate life successfully at home, business, or career. So now, your host, coach, consultant, and purveyor of hope, Matt Crump. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Matt Chat Live. Here we are again, another Wednesday, and uh, we're here every Wednesday, 5 p.m. Eastern. That would be 5 or 3, 2 on the West Coast. And for my friends in Australia, you're waking up at 7 o'clock in the morning. The next day, it's like you're in the future. That's pretty cool. So I know we're doing all right if I'm already in Thursday, but I'm still in Wednesday. I don't know how to figure that out. That gives me a headache. Anyway, welcome to another episode of Matt Chat Live. Super stoked that you're here with us today um, because uh, one of my passions in marketing and branding and design uh, is doing marketing, branding, and design. I get to talk to a, a new friend of mine named Raul. He's got an awesome business and it's um, multifaceted. We'll get a chance to talk about that and what he's able to do for people around the world and uh, how it wasn't that long ago that he wasn't doing that at all. So it's kind of interesting to see what happens when uh, we plug in our little computers and uh, decide to do something about it, right? So uh, we're gonna find all about that in Raul's life and what he's been able to accomplish. Pretty excited about that. Uh, don't forget, coming up in just a little while here tonight on Clubhouse is our show, Let's Get Naked. That's right. You can start taking it all off. Just remember, it's an all audio platform. No cameras, please. Well, yeah, no cameras. I just don't know who it's going to be, so I don't want to see that stuff. You don't want to see this either. Good grief. No, you don't want to see that. So anyway, we're going to have a great time. No, it's not about taking your clothes off. Let's Get Naked is a place where we are able to shed the veneer of doubt and fear and lack, frustration, competition, right? Where you just get rid of that mess and don't deal with that imposter syndrome stuff anymore because you know there's things that you're not telling people that happen in your life, especially on social media. If you're anything like, uh, like me, I'm a social media content creator and I'm there every day, all day long doing stuff. And uh, it could be sometimes quite frustrating. You think, well, how come, uh, how come that guy has a video that's um, not that good, but he's got like, I don't know, 75 trillion views. And I just did mine, it took me seven hours and I've got mm, five. I mean, what's the deal, right? So you get, ah, but it's just you. So we're gonna talk about those kind of things on Let's Get Naked. It's a chance where we have a, a really good safe space, some incredible moderators from around the world. I'll tell you what, y'all, Every time we do that room, it's it's just absolutely transformational. And we don't have a room that's got like thousands of people in it at one time and nobody gets a chance to talk. Um, pretty much every time we have a space, everyone in the room has an opportunity to speak. So I think you'd enjoy it. So we have a really good time with, uh, with what we do there at Let's Get Naked. Again, that's every Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Eastern. That's 4 p.m. Pacific and 9 o'clock in the morning for my pals over in Australia and a couple of them that are actually uh, co-moderators with us on the show. So super excited to have them. Can't wait for you to be a part of that. By the way, if you're on LinkedIn, uh, it's our favorite home away from home. You can join us every Wednesday there as well for an event. Usually it's up several days to a week prior to, uh, to each clubhouse time together with Let's Get Naked. Uh, you can be a part of that chat every week. Uh, there's going to be posts every week for what's coming up. Uh, you'll get sneak peeks into some of the content for the things we're going to be talking about on that Wednesday night. So I encourage you to be a part of that as well. All right, that's enough commercial stuff uh, from me. We do have a, a couple of great things coming up. I wanna share with you about an incredible guest. Well, we got plenty of time here to talk to him and his name is Raul. Be right back in just a second.
All right, so here he comes, the man, the myth, the legend. Here he is, Mr. Raul. Uh, we got to turn this off. We got to stop this. What are we doing? It's live, folks. There it is. My goodness, I couldn't get the button to work. Hey, welcome to the uh, to the show here today, Raul. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Matt. Thanks for having me on the show today. It's, I mean, I was really enjoying your intro, the talk that you were you know, giving out earlier, and it was really fun. I love your music, by the way. I need to get, get a hold of that track as well. Oh, it's so fun. Wait till, wait till, wait till we go out. You'll be at the end of the show. You'll be like, whoa. It's a, it's a good time. We have a good time here. We have a good time. Yeah. Man, I'm so glad you're here. We've had a, one time where we got a chance to chat for, I don't know, half an hour, an hour or so. And um, I got to know you a little bit. And I'm excited to share you, the guy, Raul, with, with everybody here. You've got a, a great company and you've got some incredible numbers and statistics and all that kind of stuff. We'll get to that in a minute because that's all cool. But uh, let's just back up a little bit to you. Why don't you, you know, introduce yourself to folks, tell them who you are, where, you're, where you live, and you know, a little bit about yourself. Sure, why not? Uh, so, you know, as, uh, as you all know, I'm Rahul Agarwal. I'm one of the founders of a company called designhill.com. Uh, it's one of the largest creative marketplaces in the world. Uh, we serve customers, business owners, marketing professionals from around the world. Uh, we have a number of services. Uh, we cater to, uh, you know, businesses big and small, uh, you know, anybody who's looking for any kind of design work, any creative work, or they want to get anything printed, uh, merchandise, phone cases, anything like that. I mean, you know, uh, we have a website and a service for that. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, you know, I, I started this business five, six years back. Um, I started with my brother. Uh, and we, we're still living in the same house, so I, I'm guessing we're doing pretty well at that, managing the business and living together. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, that, that's what, I, what I'm about, and uh, that's what I do. Yeah, that's awesome. That was, uh, that was pretty quick, right? I mean, it's amazing to think what's happened in the past few years of your life. You know, you yeah. talked about a design company. I mean, a lot of people can just say, honestly, you know, well, I've got a business around the world. I do, too. I mean, I've got clients from all over the world. I don't necessarily yeah. have offices in Dubai and India and France and America, right? I mean, I'm right here in Fayetteville, North Carolina. I mean, let's, get, let's just get real, right? So, I mean, but the reality is, is that there's some things that have really transpired for you to be a true uh, global business. And when you said one of the largest design companies in the world, uh, it's not just like when people say, we've got the best coffee in the world, right? This is like, yeah. this is reality. Some things have happened yeah. for you. and. Um, yeah. Let's go back maybe 10 years ago. There was no Design Hill. I mean, what was it like prior to that? What was happening in your life? 10 years ago, uh, I think I graduated. So I graduated from University of Manchester. I'm a chemical engineer by uh, education, right? And, I, and, and after that, I did my master's in, from London uh, in business management and strategy. Uh, 10 years ago, I came back from university. Uh, I joined our family business. Uh, you know, we are we're third generation entrepreneurs. Like I'm a third generation entrepreneur. So, you know, sort of entrepreneurship sort of is in our DNA and blood. That's all that we've grown up with hearing business numbers, how to do this, how to do that. So I eventually came back, joined a family business. I was shipped to a remote area for six months. Uh, you know, very like, I wouldn't say the most conducive uh, environment for somebody to really learn the trade. But I think that was part of the strategy. Uh, you know, uh, he, my father gave me a little, uh, you know, a hard time in the beginning. So I think that was good. In hindsight, I think about it and I feel that was a, a good part of my training. Uh, and then, you know, when I gradually got in the business, uh, you know, uh, me and my brother, we always had a thing for technology. Uh, we don't come from a technology background at all. Uh, you know, we had a very traditional business uh, that my grandfather and my father were, you know, running. And uh, but, you know, we felt that technology had the power to do you know, great things. Uh, we could change uh, uh, what done traditionally, and uh, te technology enables that. Uh, and I think you know, when I joined a family business, uh, uh, when I graduated ten years ago, uh, you know, at that time branding and design and all of these things were not that important. You know, especially in India. Now that's where I live. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, I went out looking for designers for agencies. Couldn't find any that you know could actually do the kind of work that I was looking for. Uh, at the same time, my younger brother, Varun, who's also the co-founder, he was graduating from, uh, he was studying in Manchester as well. Uh, and uh, he he was a very creative guy. He still is a very creative guy. And he was working as a freelancer. 
uh, you know, trying just out of passion. And he was finding a lot of issues, getting good clients, communicating with clients and stuff. So when he came back, uh, that was about seven years back. He's three years younger to me. Uh, you know, we we sort of sat together and we decided that, you know, this was a global problem. This was a problem on both sides for clients, for businesses, for marketing professionals, designers, people all over the world. There was an opportunity for us to actually bring them on the same platform uh, where we could actually provide a solution that could really, really, you know, have an impact and, you know, it could be a service for everybody. And uh, so that's that's how we started the business uh, with no clue how to build a website with no idea about it. Uh, we just sort of jumped into it. Uh, I would say we were very lucky that we had the support of friends because, you know, to allow us to actually go out and do something of our own, uh, despite the fact that we had some uh, business to go back to, right? Uh, we, you know, we decided to remain bootstrapped. Uh, that was not easy. Uh, the first year or two were very, very difficult. In fact, uh, we had a joke between us brothers. We would write resignation letters and send it out to the other one, saying that you know, <laughs> hey, this company is yours from today, and you are the sole and hundred percent owner. Because we were having a hard time. You know, it was very simple. We we're trying to build a global business. Uh, you know, trying to acquire customers all the way in US, Canada, or Europe, Australia, uh, and sitting here in India. But uh, we persevered. I think we learned a lot. We did, uh, we made a lot of mistakes. But uh, eventually, you know, things sort of, you know, for, uh, started falling in place. And, you know, one thing led to another. And then, you know, here we are today with uh, a decent business where we have four or five services. We've served uh, close to for, I don't know, 300, 400,000 customers uh, globally. Uh, we have over 200,000 creative professionals on the platform. Uh, we are a complete design to print platform now, and we've served everybody from a work from home mom to a student who's trying to do a uh, project for school to a multinational company like Microsoft, SAP, uh, for all things. So we try to build the platform as such as well that, you know, we have a service for everybody. You know, it, we don't want to. Uh, you know, anybody who, who comes in with any kind of requirement, any kind of budget, they'll find a use, a, a service on our platform. And that was the, the aim with which we, you know, we started it. And, you know, we, we kept listening to our customers and kept building more services, more products, more offerings. And, you know, design is changing. You know, customer perception for design has changed so much in the last few years that even we've had to really, you know, uh, evolve and, you know, keep uh, innovating and keep adding new uh, services and offerings and uh, I feel we are pretty much at par or maybe slightly ahead of the curve uh, that's what we've always tried to be because you know there's so many people who are also trying to do the same thing or at least part of the same thing so, oh yes I tell yeah. you if you're you're on yeah. LinkedIn like I am and I my yeah. my inbox is flooded 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 with people that are looking to do work specifically out of India of course as, yeah. as well and um, that being the case, I know that um, I think it's 74. I think you guys are getting ready to celebrate in August 74 years there in, in uh, India, yeah. um, which is absolutely amazing. There's some great history there. I've, I've got another show I'm getting ready to do about that and uh, some, some of the great struggles that took place to, uh, to finally gain your, your independence there as a country, as a nation. Um, and now, you yeah. know, there's been so much that's come from from the, the struggle, poverty, lack, all those things that, um, uh, I mean, there are incredible, incredible people in India, extremely intelligent people, very talented people. Um, but there are people there that are chemical engineers that have no work, no jobs, can't find anything, yeah. do anything. And right. then other folks there that um, don't do anything, they just want to try to leave and go someplace else and try to do something else, right? I mean, so there's so many different variables there. I, I believe that you're you're probably hiring some some good uh, good designers. You're probably always looking for people that have a great eye and uh, and great skills to come aboard with you. I mean, do you have opportunities there, like locally where you're at, or regionally? Do you have scouts and recruiters that are that are actively looking for people that you can employ that can go from nothing to having a job and a career type of thing? Is that something you do as well, or? Yeah, I mean, see, we are always on the lookout for, you know, talent, talented people, you know, uh, it, we actually, we've never really uh, given that much importance to a person's background and as much as we've given it to their will to work and something, right? 
uh, because you know, no matter what you do, I'm an I'm a chemical engineer, but do anything remotely related to chemical engineering, I don't, right? So uh, education is obviously something that you know some uh, a person needs to uh, build their aptitude and their logical reasoning and all of those skills. But what I feel is that you know as long as a person has the will to learn, uh, to to and a person is ambitious in life, I think those are two really good traits that one needs to have and identify as a business owner in somebody uh, when you're hiring them. And we're always on the lookout. And you know, and, and I'm telling you, that, I mean, you know, we are a huge country. We we have 1.3 billion people. Uh, there is no shortage of talent here. No shortage at all. Uh, and 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 I, I say for that because you know we I live here not only because of that, but if you see the Indian diaspora all over the world, you know, Indians who've gone to U.S. to North America to Australia, they've all you know there, there's hunger, uh, you know, for a better life. Uh, for a better uh, opportunity and when we get opportunities you know we are we know we sort of grab on it you know jump on it uh, because uh, uh, because opportunities are hard to come by uh, you know when you are competing with 1.3 billion people isn't it so yeah. i think that sort of inherently comes from within uh, but but you know people are really intelligent very educated uh, you know we speak english uh, as almost a, as a first language uh, you know so so that makes it easy uh, for us to be, you know, anywhere in the world and to do business anywhere in the world. So, right. so yeah, so opportunities are many and there are a lot of talented people and we are always on the lookout as well. And, you know, we, we have a team of about 150 odd people today. Uh, you know, they're all sitting here in India. Uh, but we have, a, but we, we have maybe more than 10, 15,000 designers uh, from India, our 200,000 or that we have and you know they're getting work from us so it's we're directly employing them but indirectly they are earning through our platform as well uh, and that's the same case with a lot of other developing countries like indonesia thailand uh, asia uh, south american countries i mean we have designers who are uh, are on the platform and that's one of the most gratifying things for us because when we speak to them we realize that a lot of these guys are making money on our platform, uh, which is much more than they would do by working full time in their own respective countries, right? So there is a difference that we are making to their lives and their livelihoods as well. And I think that's one of the uh, most fundamental aims that we had uh, when we started this, because we realized that a lot of these creative people, talented people in uh, a lot of these far, far east or eastern or you know uh, central Asian countries. I don't get the opportunity to work with clients, even though they might have the same amount of talent uh, and the skill sets. But yeah. now, because of technology and our platforms like ours, we are able to give them a platform to actually connect, to build trust, to build lifelong relationships with customers from around the world and make a better life for themselves. And that is something, you know, which is which is pretty great. No, I think it's I think it's incredible. That's really what's what I'm excited about. Um, I mean, let's just be real. It's not Fiverr, and um, you know, that's just the reality. Is that's where a lot of folks tend to to gravitate towards places like that, and they don't really get the shot, like you're saying, to be able to really live into their skills, talents, and abilities, right? Wow. And to have a, a platform like yours continually growing is a, is just a fantastic opportunity for a lot of folks, or at least for people that maybe. Maybe if you're fully occupied, you got all the people you need right now, but they can't get a job because it's not an available availability. They can at least get the idea how to do something like that, right? I mean, so, and you've got things out here. I mean, if, if it's possible for, for you to do what you've done in your country, yeah, you have a little bit of an advantage on the front side, right? You have some things coming behind you from your family and uh, thank thank God you had some, some you know, some opportunities there. Um, but it doesn't say what you did wasn't hard work. I mean, you're right. I mean, how many times did you write a letter of resignation? You know, so, I mean, that meant it was not easy. So uh, that's amazing. Well, let's, let's talk a little bit more about your site here in just a minute. I'm going to come back to that, give people a chance to kind of connect with that, but I want to take a quick break and talk about uh, a couple of our sponsors here that we have at uh, Matt Chat Live, some friends of mine. First one is uh, MF Consulting, a friend of mine, Chris Webb, He's up in Canada. He's a fantastic consulting firm. We'll uh, look at his information and we'll come right back to you.
right so that's chris with mf consulting and you can find him at mfconsultingpc.com he's um got a great business and when you go to the website what i really dig about this is he has a, an academy and it's not just like a membership site where you can go and watch him do like four or five videos which of course he can do something like that too but there are literally hundreds and hundreds of, of different types of topics that you can go there for click on and learn about it's really really a fantastic opportunity for a company that does uh, does management and development and marketing and and work with companies to scale their business and help them grow um, to do things that are really really fantastic ways of of learning uh, to really hone your skills and do some things that maybe you know you might not have time for on an hour long call with somebody. So anyway, it's a great great uh, company. Make sure you check them out. MF Consulting. You can find them on LinkedIn as well. If you can't find them there anywhere, just find me on LinkedIn, click on my, my connections and bam, there he is. You'll find it be pretty easy. So, uh, and then, by the way, Raul's on my, on my uh, site there too, on LinkedIn. So, I mean, you can connect with him there too, but there are some great things he has about his site. I, uh, I have pulled up a couple of things here. I think I've got, uh, let's see right here. Well, this is a little bit of your information right here. So you got, um, of course it's Design Hill. We'll pull that website up location in a moment, uh, designhill.com. Uh, he is on LinkedIn. I mean, it's pretty simple. His name, which is right there in front of you. So, and I probably say it wrong all the time, but I'm sorry. I'm trying my best. I'm a Southern boy here down in North Carolina. You know, what can I help? What can I do? You know, um, but uh, really, he's got some really fantastic opportunities in his business. Um, uh, let's, of course, that was designhill.com again. Uh, I wanted to try to pull. I wonder if I can do that real quick. Let me see if we can do this while we're live off the fly here. Design, designhill.com. Let's open you up. And boom, 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 boom. There we go. Oh, I love this technology. So I'm going to be able to share my screen really fast. Share screen. Uh, we're going to go to Chrome. We're going to go to Design Hill. We're going to share it. And here we are. All right. So um, when I first get to Design Hill, we have uh, your, of course, you know, your banner ad at the top side of it. This, you've got a couple of ways we can navigate that site. Uh, I noticed earlier when I was playing around there and, and digging around for some things. When we first come here, this is more your your, your marketing stuff. Uh, this is uh, definitely things that for folks that are doing print, um, novelties, different things that people might need for their business or their brand. Uh, you can do so many different things. I guess one of the things I'm thinking about um, is... Well, of course, you got a lot of competition out of China these days, but uh, you know when it comes down to international work, um, I'm in North Carolina, so you're not you're not the shop right around the corner from me. Um, mm -hmm. You know what's it like to do business with you and uh, shipping uh, times things of that nature that are important, especially now where we're we're, uh, I mean, we're not really post COVID as much where we're trying to be, but India had a really hard problem with COVID here and still. Mm -hmm wrestling with that it's not completely you know done there either um mm -hmm. i don't know how that affects what you do with your business where you ship out of what you do um but you know what's that look like for a customer internationally um when they click on something on your website and try to order it is it uh are, have you had a good success rate with yeah, yeah. timeliness things like that we have uh, in fact if you go to the services section uh, on the drop down on the top and uh, you can go to a print shop uh, you'll you'll be able to shop on print shop if you just go to the last uh, yeah, under Oops. right here yeah. shop on yeah okay so you know we actually we have our fulfillment centers in uh, 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 US and Europe so actually everything that we print is custom printed or you know printed on demand uh, in United States itself so oh. shipping is no issue at all so anything that you want so we have two options with shipping either you can uh, buy something which is already designed by the creatives on our platform or you can custom create any product so you know you see the option that says create create custom products on the top on the header yes create. yeah so that's a custom printing so you can actually print anything you want uh you know you click on create create now uh you can print on custom uh, phone cases t-shirts hoodies anything that you want can be custom printed for you um, and delivered to your doorstep. Um, and you can put up your logos, your, you know, if you're planning your holidays or family vacations, uh, a lot of people do that. So, you know, we've had a lot of success with this. We have multiple vendors, uh, uh, you know, 
a lot of great pro- uh, brands that you know we print on and on the marketplace side you know we have all these amazing creative professionals uh, they uh, they basically set up their online uh, shops and you know for any occasion valentines day friendship day uh, for kids for adults uh, you know we have some really great stuff and you know everything gets it's one of the best printing companies in the world uh, that you know we work with and everything can get delivered to your doorstep uh, you know as soon as possible that's amazing that's really good well i mean that's the other thing that i really like what you just mentioned was that um because you have uh, oops sorry there i am and you are um because you have the opportunity of having m- multiple print locations uh, that yeah. really yeah. that really um that really defeats that problem with like oh my gosh is it going to get here in time it's coming from another country we got to go through customs not so no. much <laughs> now you've developed relationships with other companies and and you can yeah. you yeah. Collab- collaborate with them and now you've got a great opportunity for folks to be able to get things done and i'm sure at a very competitive uh competitive rate still right yeah right. yeah definitely yeah that's amazing so tell us a little bit more about uh let's see i've got this site there was a couple i think there was another thing that i was looking at earlier which was this is the uh, design side so you want to get anything printed or anything designed uh, so if you go down you have all the design, different design services uh, if you go further down uh, you'll be able to see everything uh, see these are gigs then the design contests uh, then you know print shop is something which you mentioned uh, you know we have an ai logo maker uh, this oh, is something really that is, it's called design studio it's a diy tool uh, you know, people can actually just use the templates that we have and create their own designs. Uh, then custom clothing, and yeah, that's that's what we do. And these are some of the customer testimonials. Uh, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. And just a couple of uh, nobody places down there like Entrepreneur and Inc. Magazine and Forbes and Huffington Post. Yeah, nobody, nobody really special there. But <laughs> so what I like really cool here because I'm a designer. Um, and I have, uh, I didn't use this tool. I'll be honest right now and say that I haven't used it. Um, but I have gone to other websites, not yours specifically that do AI, uh, logo design and they're, uh, they're pretty horrible. I mean, they just look really, really bad, you know, it's just really, uh, yeah, it's like old school Microsoft word stuff, you know, it's just, no, I can't no, no, no. Our tool is pretty pretty cool, so you can try it later. And if you if you like anything, let me know. Yeah, and that's why that's what my point is. Like I I usually do my own stuff just because that's I can do it. But there's a lot of people, many many people, a lot most of my customers that are not yeah. graphic designers. Yeah. They don't want to be a graphic designer. They don't have time to be a graphic designer. So to have a little bit more input on your own, to have an AI tool like that available on your website is is pretty cool. Um, yeah. And what's the fee for something like that on your site? Do you know off offhand anymore? So sorry, I didn't follow that. What's the fee? Do you know that offhand? How much it costs on your site to use the AI uh, logo creator? I mean, it's as little. I mean, it's actually free to use. Uh, but uh, you know, if you want to buy something, the cheapest logo that you get for twenty dollars. How much was I'm sorry bandwidth? Sorry. Twenty. Two zero. Twenty bucks. 20 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. So instead of having to go through another account like Fiverr or whatever and deal with somebody and trying to explain what you want yeah. and go through all the questions yeah. back and forth, you can just figure it out yourself, yeah. make it, pay for it, done. That's a pretty good, good process. So you have thought of everything to be able to help folks in their marketing and branding from do it yourself to uh, we'll yeah. do it for you kind of, kind of a deal, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, along, along so many different ways to help. Um, exactly. So what do you find? What do you find right now is like your number one area of usage with what you're doing in business right now and your website and your creation stuff? What do you find is like the most uh, commonly used services right now? Uh, in fact, it's it's uh, the AI logo maker, you know, because there's so much entrepreneurial zeal out there. And, you know, so many people are trying to, you know, build businesses and getting to do their own things. Uh, and I think a uh, tool like this really works well because you know, when a lot of people are starting out and, you know, maybe it's a passion project or it's just a side hustle, uh, they don't want to spend a lot, right? And at that point of time, and they want to get things done quickly. So a tool yeah. like this really works well because uh, though the cheapest version of it is $20, uh, for $65, you can actually get your entire social media kit, your t-shirt designs, letterheads, your complete wow. branding kit for uh, within five minutes for about $50 or 65 bucks. That's uh, so cheap. That's good. And it takes five minutes. 
so uh, you know that's all it takes and you know for somebody who's just you know just starting out and they don't they don't have a lot of money to invest i think this is something that works really really well and obviously you know once once they feel you know more uh, you know they, they get a little bit of success or their idea is validated then again they can always take that design and you know hire a professional uh, maybe yeah. you know from a more sophisticated branding perspective and you know get things done uh, good starting, but, point, good starting point and then you know for a lot of folks that might be listening that are maybe new startups or you're thinking about doing something yourself you're like oh man i want to check this out but wow sixty five dollars i don't even have sixty five dollars right now to do anything like that i have to do it through canva or something maybe right so here's here's my recommendation i'm not even going to ask him about it i'll just tell you straight up that by by all the time and effort you put into doing what what you want and what he has available when you talk about the sizing for a facebook cover uh facebook profile picture ads uh, and then youtube different size design instagram different size of design stories on instagram different size of size linkedin different size of design uh the stories all of them are different um by the time you do all of that after you've spent hours doing these types of things um 65 bucks press a button done i'm telling you <laughs> it's worth it folks because you're going to spend more time uh doing those things and time is money uh, and then you got way more time to utilize those tools that can help you make more money when they're done, right? So it's really just a great value, good good thing you put out there for folks. I'm super glad to hear about something like that. I could see why that would be a top a top piece, especially when folks come up with ideas for. Um, you might already be a branded person, but you've got a new uh, webinar or workshop or something coming up, and you've got a title for it, and you want to be able to have a theme and boom, just knock it out really quick on something like that, you know? So that's really awesome. So uh, so you're still, um, mom and dad, they still have a business there in India? Not, uh, they're not doing Design Hill? Mom and dad? No, they, 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 they live, in fact, you know, we have a, a thing in India that, you know, we, the families sort of live together. Uh, you know, it's called a joint family. And uh, so we, in this house where I'm talking from right now, because we're still in a lockdown situation, uh, I have my grandfather, I have my father, uh, my mother, uh, my myself, my wife, my kids, my brother, his wife, and a third brother. So we're three brothers, and we're all living in the same house. And uh, so we have a de- we have a decently big house. So don't worry, it's not like we're crammed. All, we're all of us crammed crammed into one room and trying to feed up each other. But but uh, but you know, this is I think this is one of the most amazing things about the Indian culture that uh you know we all live together and we all hate each other every day but we also love each other and you know there is uh, uh there is some you know issue going on and you know we have little kids now screaming around in the house and so i think it's a good you know having family together uh so that's how you know we are till day uh, we're building another house next to this because obviously we're getting cramped now uh <laughs> maybe for the 10 years 20 years but but yeah Oh yeah, I can imagine it'd be like all that stuff going on. You're like, uh, hey y'all, um, I'm getting ready to go on a show with Matt. I'll be gone. I think his show's maybe, I don't know, maybe two or three hours long. So I'll be back here in the podcast studio for the next couple of hours. Just make sure nobody comes by and says anything to me. I will while we've been talking, my my son, he's he's actually peeped in four times. And I've been telling him <laughs> I know, no. <laughs> and, you yeah. know, we have start, we were in this lockdown situation. Uh, generally, I do these from you know my office and stuff. But nowadays, we've just been here in our house for the last uh, two and a half months. So yeah, that's amazing. That's just wild. So how much do you get to go out, you guys? Because of uh, obviously getting food and supplies, and they have a how? What's that look like right now where you're at in your area? Uh, uh, things are now better. Uh, to be very honest with you, we had the worst, worst, worst ever uh, pan- wave uh, uh, in the month of April and May. Uh, you know, thousands of people dying and, you know, there's just a lot of chaos all around. Uh, yeah. But now, because we've been in a uh, lockdown for about eight weeks, uh, th- uh, you know, the things have gone down drastically. Uh, you know, infection rates are low. The number of positive cases are in a few hundred now. Uh, so yeah, so now the movements have started, and you know we are we have started venturing out as well because uh, you know you get really sick and tired of staying at home. Uh, but you know it's it's become better now. It's become much better. Oh, that's awesome. And do you guys have the uh, access to the vaccine there in your area? 
Yeah, we do. In fact, I've, I've, I got myself vaccinated in April, uh, both, both the jabs done. Uh, in fact, you know, uh, me, Varun, my brother, that is, uh, we started an initiative uh, in the month of April. Uh, we we called we you called it Mission Oxygen. Uh, it's actually it grew up to be one of the biggest initiatives in India. We raised ten million dollars. Uh, we we spent ten million dollars in uh, buying oxygen concentrators and setting up oxygen plants all over the country. Uh, we donated about six thousand concentrators to three hundred fifty hospitals in twenty six states. Uh, so you know we've been quite busy in the last months doing this because uh, it was really bad. Uh, you know a lot of friends. You know, passed away family. Uh, and we just wanted to do something, and I think it gave us an opportunity to do something. And we, uh, so yeah. So, but yeah. But were you able to raise that 10, was, was that ten million being able to raise uh, some of the money internationally due to um, your connection, yeah, yeah. And your presence now? We we raised ten million out of that. Uh, five six, five and a half million was raised internationally. I mean, we got a lot of funding uh, donations from United States. From Canada, Singapore, from United Kingdom, Australia. I mean, all over the world. Uh, we had forty-three thousand donors. Wow, that's uh, amazing, so bro. That's amazing. All of all of that in like a month. Uh, we started on twenty-third April. Uh, we closed our uh, fundraising on thirtieth of May, uh, which uh, just a week, a couple of weeks back. Uh, and uh, we raised ten million dollars. We spent ten million dollars. Uh, we uh, we chartered nine planes from China. Uh, from nine airports, uh, a lot of, and you know, sending these concentrators to uh, 26 states, uh, more than, uh, you know, I don't know how many cities, but we, I know 375 hospitals. Yeah. Wow. So we, it's amazing. And uh, seven years ago, you're sitting here thinking, is this thing even going to work? And now you're like, yeah, we raised $10 million in a month and we helped our entire country. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That's amazing. It's so amazing. I'm so, so happy for you. And I'm so happy for uh, for your your connections, your people, your friends, the things you've been able to accomplish, because that's the thing about success, I feel that. Um, and I'd like to ask you that question as we get ready to wrap up here is that I feel success personally is not about making money or getting all the things I'd like to have. But for me, it's making somebody else successful. I want to be able to provide the opportunities for somebody else to be successful and then be better than me. I mean, I want you to be way better than me. If I can have a part of something like that, then I feel successful. I mean, I'm sure that's kind of what you feel like, but what's, what might be your words on what you feel like success is from, from your point of view so far in your life? Uh, I, th I think you cannot be more right, more correct, uh, because I really don't gauge success from a metric of how much money I'm making or how much funding I've raised or anything like that. I think these are very... Uh, time driven luck based and you know th there are different uh, ways i attribute success to but i think uh, the most important thing about success is to be able to accomplish something in life you know to it can as you said you know being a better version of myself uh, every day every week every month i think that is success that is incremental success because when we talk about materialistic success i think you know you can have a target of say reaching you can say that okay when i make 1 million dollars i feel successful but the day you make 1 million dollars you'll always have you all you'll already have a target of 10 million dollars or 100 million dollars yeah. and it'll be like that that moment of happiness will last you for 5 seconds so i i think uh, it's more uh, success can is should be much, it should be more personal uh, you know in terms of your growth as an individual uh, as a businessman maybe uh, you know uh, success can be how you're impacting lives, how you're creating a legacy business, how you're creating something tangible in life. I think th these are sort of things which, you know, I really attribute success to. Uh, and as you said, you know, making people successful, doing, I mean, if I were to really honestly say something, uh, Mission Oxygen, what we, we started a month back, is probably the most uh, successful venture of my, in my entire life. You know, we, yeah. we, we basically seeded a startup we raised it, made it global. We funded it. We actually now we are accomplishing something, you know, where, where we, we didn't imagine we would do in like 40 days and, uh, you know, making an impact and saving thousands of lives. Uh, but then, you know, it's not success. In a, I'm not earning anything out of it, right? It was completely pro bono. It was an NGO effort, uh, non for profit. Uh, but right. it's success and it gives me satisfaction because, you know, we could make an impact uh, and we did something good in life. Um, so, you know, so yeah. again, 
you know, that's legacy. And you just brought up the great point is that especially for a lot of folks that are frustrated because of finances or whatever, and maybe some folks that are watching or listening today to you and your story, people that live, you know, a hundred, hundred miles for you, 50 kilometers from you, and they have nothing, they're talented individuals and they're frustrated. Um, and, and it's not about external that is is the success it's it's internal right the internal things first we have to be internally focused in, in that sense not selfish uh, not self-centered uh not self-seeking but uh you know to be able to understand that the values of these things like you were just mentioning it's not about the the money per se yes we need it it's a tool right it's got to be available yeah. to be able to succeed yeah. in some things but if you change the expectation if you change the perception of what you think success is especially when you think of success through the lens of the lack you may be living in um it, it you're never going to achieve it the way you could if you would actually flip the script on that thought process and yeah. uh, and really think about like you know one day i mean i guarantee you that you didn't uh, really you didn't say you know one day i want to uh raise 10 million dollars and get uh, oxygen machines around my country and save thousands of lives. never never even never even came to your mind at all. But because of the things you're able to do, because the things you care about other people, because you care about legacy, an idea came up, an opportunity was there. You had skills, talents, and abilities to, to try to do something and it worked. It's yeah. just, it's just a matter of focusing on the right things, you know? So it's really good to take a step back uh, and yeah. really yeah. examine something because you had amazing uh, education prior to this business. Uh, it wasn't exactly uh, your degrees weren't exactly with what you're doing with the company, but everything you did in your degrees work in your company. But, you know, you didn't become an engineer somewhere. You didn't become a, a CEO of a of a uh, company that's doing whatever, maybe making coffee mugs or something. Although you do produce them, you're not necessarily making manufacturing coffee mugs. Right. Uh, it's yeah. turned into so much more. And you just have to be willing to uh, to open yourself up to those opportunities. Right. Right, 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 right. You're absolutely yeah. right. I couldn't agree. I could I couldn't. I can't agree more with you. Uh, with you. I tell you what. I want folks one more time. We just get a chance to see that um, you can go to your website here at designhill.com. Really, really simple to get to. There are you know pages of opportunities on there for people to find uh, ways to to promote themselves, to build their business, to work on branding. Uh, there's some community uh, opportunities there as well. Um, great opportunities to engage. I'm sure you're going to have something somewhere along the lines that's going to talk about your your initiatives that you just went through with the, uh, I forget what you called the initiative, the oxygen thing you just did there. But, um, yeah, yeah. So I'm sure that you can find out about that there too, right? So uh, just an amazing, amazing opportunity for people to get involved. And uh, what an amazing man you are. I'm so grateful that we've had a chance to connect a couple of times and uh, that you haven't had to um, kill your son since we've been on the show here, which is pretty awesome. He's been holding back. Make sure I tell tell him that I said that he's going to come down, down here to North Carolina. I'll, I'll treat him to the beach and we'll get some ice cream down around the corner from the yeah. local farm that makes their own ice cream cones. And and we'll give him a good treat here in North Carolina one day when he gets to fly over here, right? <laughs> I will tell him that. Maybe he'll be there very soon. Yeah, I'm ready for him to come by. I've got a, I've got a good new friend there in India that um, works in your government, and I've been thinking about coming out there as soon as we can and oh, try to do some work. Nice. I do. Uh, yeah, we I would can like to. Some great Indian food. Oh yeah, that'd be nice. I'm, I'm ready for that. Not the stuff I get right here in North Carolina, right? I'm the real good stuff there. It'd be fantastic. Well, one more thing, Ro, before we go. If there's one thing that you could tell anybody that's watching that is, uh, you know. You got two different types of folks that be listening today. Some people that are in, in business startups or or in business looking for some opportunities to uh, to uh, scale and increase their revenue and and be able to streamline some things. And then you've got folks that are listening today that are really struggling. Um, folks that were like you prior to starting this business, Design Hill, um, and really wrestling with a lot of issues in their lives and about to throw in the towel. Um, you know, what might be a couple of things you would say to folks as we get ready to leave today? Uh, I think for folks who are, uh, you know, struggling with their business, I think, uh, uh, you know, you've already taken the most difficult step and that is to actually follow your dream, uh, follow your passion. Uh, but, you know, uh, 
what I would say is that you know it's always good to take a step back and see where you're getting where you're going wrong. Because uh, one thing I would always tell myself is that you know I'm not trying to uh, really invent something. You know, I'm trying to build an online business. I'm trying to build a freelancing business. Uh, it's something which is possible, which has been done. Uh, I'm just trying to re-innovate. I'm just trying to create a better solution, a service. So there is. So it's not something which is impossible, right? So we just need to keep trying. We need to keep experimenting. We need to keep. We need to speak to people. We need to. You know, if you don't have a mentor, go and find one. Uh, but I, I think that you know people who are struggling, there is you know you'd never know that the next thing that you try might really work for you. Uh, so uh, and it's easier said than done. But you know don't give up. Uh, uh, and I think that that's something uh, I would really say because that worked for us, right? We 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 sort of uh, did quit a few times, uh, <laughs> but, but hanging on and we kept latching to it and we kept trying things and it just worked out for us. Uh, and on the second side, you know, anybody who's trying to, uh, you know, start a business, uh, I would say that uh, uh, I think there is nothing more adventurous in life than being an entrepreneur, uh, because in the same uh, day from morning to evening, you can probably experience all the kinds of feelings that life has to give you from pure exhilaration to pure disappointment to anger, frustration. Uh, yeah, you know, it's amazing. Uh, but you have to be built for that. You need to be ready for that. And uh, I think if you're trying to, to go, uh, if you want to try something, if you're thinking about something, it's better to go and try it. Uh, try it out. Let let it's okay if you if it doesn't work for you. You know, just try it out. If you have that passion for entrepreneurship, I think before you think overthinking, if you if you do a lot of overthinking before you ask a hundred people, I think just go out, try it. Even if you have to, you know, you burn some money or you. Uh, you know, you you fail at it. It's okay because at least you, you will get over it and you learn much more. Maybe you you know that this is not something that you should waste your time thinking about. You want to be an entrepreneur. There is something else for you to do, right? Because otherwise, till the time you try that, you'll keep thinking about that one idea and you'll keep thinking about doing it, but you'll not have the courage to do it, and you'll spend you'll waste a lot of your time. So I think it's it's really important that you jump into something. Uh, be realistic. Create, uh, test it out. I'm not saying go full throttle, invest your life's savings in it, but test it out. Speak to your customers, your ideal customers, potential customers. Try that. Be uh, I think that's something that I would really, you know, uh, advise anybody who's uh, starting out. Oh, that's fantastic. That's really great advice, especially in the times that we're living in. And I feel, um, well, Laura, I surely hope 2022 will be a, quite a different. Uh, look as yeah. to what we've been experiencing the past couple of years. I thought we might have been a little bit more ahead right now, but um, you know, there's a lot of things to learn right now in the process of the life we're all living in this planet. We're all experiencing a lot of the same things right now. And um, you know, one thing is for sure, we can't do it alone. And uh, to have a company like yours, you're offering uh, really some really low, low cost entry level opportunities for people all the way to full blown, uh, do everything for you kind of stuff. I mean, you've got a fantastic opportunity for people and uh, you know, it's possible. You just have to make sure that you do something and yeah. take, take some bite-sized opportunities, you know, try it out, right? The least things you have bad, worst thing that's happened is somebody says no. All right. I mean, yeah. good grief. Yeah. You're going to hear no a lot in your life. You might as well just try it, right? One day you'll get a yes. <laughs> yes, 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 exactly, exactly. Well, I appreciate right. you being here. I'll let you get back to all your uh, your family, grandpa and and your mom, your dad, your brother, your kids, the kids, the neighbors, the, the cat, the dog, the uh, pizza delivery guy. I mean, I, I don't know what's going on there, but amazing. You had to build another house just so you can have a bathroom. I mean, come on. This is amazing. <laughs> Thanks again so much for being here, Roel. His company, once again, is Design Hill, and you can go to his website. Uh, I talked to you about that earlier, which was designhill.com. Pretty simple opportunity to engage with him there. And don't forget, folks, we're here every Wednesday, 5 p.m., and uh, it's 5 p.m. Eastern time. That's uh, 2, I try to do math all the time, 2 o'clock Pacific, and 7 a.m. for all of our friends in Australia. We look forward to seeing you here, of course, the next time, same Matt time. Same Matt channel here at Matt Chat Live. We'll see you all next time. Thanks, Ro. Thank Thanks for tuning in to another episode here on the Hope Revealed Podcast Network. 
If you'd like to find out more information about this episode or learning more about Matt's coaching or consulting services, resources, or booking information he has available, please visit mattcrump.tv. And thank you again for tuning in. And remember, in any dark place or any uncertain moment, right around the corner, there can always be a hope revealed.